Hello and welcome to Craft and Chat. It's Tuesday, two o'clock, and I'm live on my Facebook page, Inspiring Inkin, and YouTube channel as well. If you're watching live, can you do me a quick sound and light check? And if you're watching the replay, thank you for catching up with us. Uh, 20 minutes or so of chatting, then we get crafting. So let's just check, check all my, <laughs> all my screens. Looks like I'm live where I should be, which is always a bonus. Hi, Michelle. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to any of you who I haven't seen already or spoken to already this year. Um, I can't believe it's the ninth already. Uh, so we are we are moving on into 2024. So, oh, Donna's here. Oz is in the house, and Ali as well. Fantastic. And Sue, brilliant. Okay, so how are we doing? Um, we've gone here in the UK from flooding and torrential rain to actual snow. There was snow in Fairham yesterday. And for those of you who have spent any time with me, you will know I am obsessed <laughs> with snow. Here on the south coast of the UK, snow is very rare. We don't get it very often at all. Um, it was it was the odd flurry during the day yesterday, um, but in the evening we got a little bit. There was enough for me to actually have to use the scraper on the car. So, <laughs> um, so that was that was good. Oh, um, so let's see. Elizabeth's here. Hello, Tracy's here. Hello. Are you this side of the water, Tracy, or the other side of the water? Um, try, is it is it afternoon or morning where you are? <laughs> um, hello, Lorraine. Apparently, it's sunny and cold in pool. Donna said they had flooding in Oz over Christmas. Absolutely. The flooding here in the UK as well has been pretty horrendous. Um, it's, yeah, we, we just the weather currently is just crackers isn't it um but you know don't don't talk to a brit about the weather <laughs> honestly it's it's like the british go to when you meet somebody new it's kind of like oh nice weather we're having <laughs> i don't know i don't know what it is i think it's a cultural thing thank you elizabeth um, she's saying that the sound and light is fine on Facebook. Hello, Anne. Is it chilly up north, Anne? Uh, Chris and Angela are here and the snow's gone today. Yeah, ours has gone too. Hi, Judith. Oh, so Tracy, you're the other side of the pond then. Tracy's in Canada. Um, currently just nine, ten o'clock in the morning there. So, oh, you're only, what, four hours behind. So not as far over. Freezing in Yorkshire, Suzanne. Yeah, one extreme to the other, says Donna. Absolutely. Bright and sunny, Ali. Yeah, well, I'm, <laughs> I've actually been in the outside. I know. Quite often on a Tuesday, I don't set foot outside because I have obviously the live kind of talking to you guys now. And then at four o'clock, I do a live with my team as well. So normally on a Tuesday, I'm doing doing prep and other stuff for, for the lives. So I quite often don't go out, but I actually went out. <laughs> I went out this morning. Um, yeah, it's beautiful out there. Just mighty chilly, mighty chilly. So, um, today's chat, so last week I asked if anyone had got any New Year's resolutions and the answer pretty much was a resounding no. <laughs> um, just, yeah, people are just <laughs> not, not doing New Year's resolutions. So I thought I'd ask another question kind of relating to the beginning of the year, which is spring cleaning. <laughs> so, meteorologically speaking, 
we're actually still in winter. And spring doesn't actually really happen until March. So, firstly, do you do spring cleaning? Secondly, do you do it now or do you do it sort of March, April time? And what do you spring clean? Um, there, <laughs> it's just curiosity. That's what it's all about, curiosity. Um, I don't know. I don't really spring clean um, in the sense of, you know, going through the whole house and doing all of that. But I do, I don't know, every now and again, have a major sort out, clean up, tidy up. You know, like color, emptying out all the kitchen cupboards and cleaning all the inside of the kitchen cupboards and getting rid of stuff that I don't need. And I'm not actually sure whether that's kind of spring cleaning or whether it's just me trying to get rid of stuff <laughs> that I don't need. I just, we, oh, we gather so much stuff. And Brian and I are both squirrels. We we like keeping stuff. And he's, bless him, he's worse than me because I'll get rid of things and he'll go, yeah, but it might be useful. <laughs> so I'm all for, you know, getting it out of the house. He's going, yeah, but it might be useful. So a lot of the times the stuff goes from the house into the garage. <laughs> which is Brian's domain, mainly. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. I've got a... <laughs> huh. Okay. So, I had... A real weird thing going on then. Um, did that <laughs> did that affect you guys? My internet completely dropped out and it was like I had a power cut. Weird. Weird. Um, so <laughs> I'm sorry, that completely freaked me out. My screen went black. Oh, 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 right. Oh, okay. Um, good. I'm back. <laughs> Hooray. Um, yeah. So where, where was that? Oh yeah. Talking about stuff that goes into the garage and, but then what Brian does, he builds and I mean, he's an engineer, but he's really talented woodworker. He's a really talented metal worker. So he'll build me things and, you know, I'll say, oh, we could really do with a, I don't know, shoe rack and it'll disappear off into the garage and come back with something um, that he's built from stuff he's found in the garage. So, you know, I can't complain that it goes from the house to the garage, um, but. But yeah, so so there we go. So I, I'm not convinced it's classed. What I do is classed as spring cleaning. But I think spring cleaning as a, I don't know, topic or a um, spring cleaning as a as a thing probably existed in like the Victorian times when they had fires and soot and you know way more dirt and dust you know the industrial revolution that kind of stuff in their houses so you would need to really work through everything maybe I don't know let's have a look let me catch up on the comments because I've all gone crackers um do, 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 do. hi Karen Hi, Val. We're coming your way, Val, in May. Um, probably, probably going down the keys, I think. So if you've got <laughs> if you've got any must-see things in Florida, obviously 
I know about like the the main places to go and see. And we did we did come to Florida um, about eight years ago and spent quite a lot of of time in the Everglades and in South Beach. Um, but if there's anything that you can recommend, that'd be awesome. Kathy Jean, hello. Alberta, Canada's in the house. <laughs> Ali's saying spring's not going to happen till March. So I'm not like, no, we're not talking about it till then. Donna, spring cleans when it needs it. Winter, summer, spring, autumn, and anywhere in between. Ali says what I'm talking about is decluttering. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, Chris, no spring cleaning. She has a purge on an area when energy permits. Yeah, and I think that's probably a good description, Chris, actually. It's, for me, it tends to be that something is, I don't know, irritating me. <laughs> As in... You know, the cupboard's a bit over full and it's, I don't know, or an area is just getting really cluttered and I can't get at it to clean it. So, so yeah. Right. So Elizabeth saying she's rearranged things in her craft room to fit more in. <laughs> yes, that counts. That absolutely counts. Um, I thought, actually, next week we can talk about storage, crafting storage, um, because, yeah, that's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a minefield. Hi, Paul. Italy is in the house. Um, Anne is trying to get rid of stuff, but not craft stuff. I know. We need more space. So, you know, I I quite confidently say, you know, my craft stuff, I've only got what I use and it's all downstairs. And then you look behind me <laughs> and there's another eight cubes down, down there. Oh, down there that you can't actually see. To be fair, actually, no, <laughs> there are 12 cubes of which six of them have craft stuff in it and then there's <laughs> there's a cabinet over there as well and another one over there hmm so yeah i think my spring cleaning is going to be crafting spring cleaning because <laughs> it needs to be done oh dear right Donna's so it's a bit of a hoarder. Yeah, you see, and I don't know. I think it's being frugal, keeping stuff and putting it in the in the garage for later. <laughs> but Donna's husband usually asks her if she's got what he's looking for. <laughs> and she has. So you see, that's good. Alice saying he's a very enterprising man. Yeah, he is awesome. I mean, bless him. He has to be amazing because he puts up with me. But um, yeah, he can build anything. And, <laughs> and also he will build like a model of something for me because I don't know whether it's an engineer thing. We've talked about this before, but he can somebody can describe something to him or he can sketch it and he can imagine what it actually is and what it looks like. And I can't, I have to physically see it. So he builds me models out of cardboard so I can kind of see like a real life size thing. Um, you know, he's awesome. Um, hello, Tina, Janet. Hello, hello. <laughs> Val's going to brush up on the far south Florida gems. I don't mind. You can yeah, anywhere in Florida have car. <laughs> we can travel. Ah, so mum's here. My mum's here, Pauline. Um, so Nanny Baker. So that's my dad's mum. 
used to spring clean and she used to move all the furniture and everything and have winter and summer curtains yeah you see but Na and nanny baker had a coal fire so i wonder whether it's kind of kind of connected connected to that that's interesting isn't it um ooh, hang on oh all these messages are all going all over the place Paul's saying hello to his mum. Janet's here. Ali's changing her bedroom around because she spent so much time in it last year whilst having chemo. Feels like a hospital room. <gasps> so she's got a new few things to go on the dressing table, etc. Awesome. So one of the things that I do now, probably every 18 months or two years, is I go through all my clothes and hoik out everything that I'm not wearing, not using. And I keep rearranging things. Um, if you want to giggle, <laughs> if you go on my blog and um, look for Marie Kondo, um, The Art of Tidying Up, I actually documented how much stuff I actually cleared out of my bedroom. But I still now still work to kind of that principle with my clothes and and my stuff um not the rest of the house <laughs> but definitely my bedroom oh dear no zaina i'm i'm live i'm live <laughs> Oh dear. So Louise's dad is always making something exactly like I'm describing of Brian. And Elizabeth's husband's always asking, have you got? And she has. You see, this is good. This is good. We've got all this stuff so they can make things. Stella's in the house, Texas. Hooray, hooray. I tell you, we're we're very international today. Um <laughs> Donna's still waiting to move. So she says it's going to be like Christmas all over again because she'll be able to get everything out, which will be wonderful. Yeah, Alice saying she can't wait to go through the wardrobe. I honestly, I loved it. And, and I had another purge just before Christmas, actually. That was good. Hello, Tessa. Are you better now? And Donna's saying, is it marvellous what we can fit into tiny spaces? It is. But equally, the thing for me when I did my clothes was when I actually got it all out <laughs> and I put it on the bed, it was like as tall, it, it felt like it was as tall as me. It wasn't. But I had all this stuff and it's like, no, one person doesn't need this much stuff. So, um, yeah, so I got rid of loads of stuff. Um, Gordy's here. Hello, hello, North Carolina. North Carolina. <laughs> She's saying NC. Mm, I, I'm gonna have to gonna have to swat up on my uh, state abbreviations. Oh, Sue as being culling some of her craft stuff from distant past Marina Bisk, Baja Breeze. Oh, that's one of my favorite. They're too blue, Sue. <laughs> You're letting blues go. Um, but she's sending it to CAMS, which is the Child and As Adolescent Mental Health, where her daughter works, which is brilliant. The occupational therapist will use it to craft with the patients. That's awesome. Good morning, Tina. Tess is getting better. Um, brilliant. Yeah, Goldie, I was right. North Carolina. Oh, Zena, she's in hospital. Honestly, you guys, I hope you're getting better. Okay, so shall we, <laughs> shall we do some crafting? Shall we, shall we look at some new stuff? Um, I think we need to do that. 
Oh, Maryland is in the house. Thank you, Tina. So, catalogs. Um, I can actually open the catalogs now and show you. Oh, I've gone, <laughs> gone into soft focus. Let me just get it to refocus on my face. <sighs> Sorry for those of you that are watching on the telly when you get my whole face <laughs> in the thing. Um, I don't know what I'm looking for. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, typical. You think you know what you're looking for and then you can't find it. Page 64 is what I'm looking for. Da, da, da. So Ali said... Her husband says, where do we put such and such? And her reply is, oh, we didn't put it anywhere. You dumped it somewhere instead of putting it back in its rightful place. So, Ali, in our house, we will flip that around. Amanda just abandons things. Brian has a place for everything. I can ask him if. I need a random Allen key for something that, you know, we haven't used an Allen key on for like 10 years. And he will be able to go and find exactly the right thing to do the whatever it is. So, yeah, me, I wouldn't have a hope. Um, so today we're going to be crafting with this. Um, which is stippled roses. And it is a stamp and die bundle. And the bundle is 51.25. And there is papers to coordinate that you can have for free. So buy the bundle, get the papers for free. The bundle on its own is amazing. Um, the papers are gorgeous. Um, so I've got a couple of cards to make. I've got a few different bits and pieces to show you. Um, so let me get the camera around, turned around. <coughs> Actually, bear with me a second. I'm going to fish my tea bag out of my tea. That's what I'm going to do. And I appreciate <laughs> that that's just going to slow me down just a second because I need to move that out of the way. And so otherwise, all you're going to see is tea. And as important as peppermint tea is to my life, you don't need to see it. So let's stop the camera. Move that around. Switch that. Hurrah. Okay. So let's start with the papers. Now, sometimes with the papers, the dies cut things out from the papers. Um, you might remember last week I showed you the tool papers. Um, this time they don't. Um, the dies don't cut anything out, but you'll see how easy some of the images are to cut out. So I'll show you that in a second. So the colours in the papers are Calypso Coral, Lost Lagoon, Pebbled Path, Pool Party and Wild Wheat. Now, Wild Wheat is, is, keeps popping up. Um, those of you that did craft along with me in December, um, I was saying that wild wheat is a colour that I'm I'm using quite a lot of at the moment. Um, it's, it's really interesting colour. Um, yeah, it's very cool. Anyway, the papers, and it's this is called stippled roses, and you'll see with the stamped images that. Um, in a minute but if I bring this up you can see it's made of teeny 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 dots 
Um, and the celebration papers are a full pack of 12. So you get two each of the six designs. So on one side, you've got like a pattern side and the other side, you've got like a color wash or a plainer side. So this is obviously the wild wheat. Then you've got a pool party and white flowers. I love this. This is wild wheat and it's like a fabric texture or a fabric picture. It's not textured. They're smooth. So this is the one that you can cut out and color. So you've got lots and lots of, of images um, there that you can you can cut out. And the lines are quite straight. You know, sometimes with fussy cutting, you have really wiggly lines. These are quite straight, so they're quite, quite good. And then you've got Calypso Coral Color Wash. Um, you've got some leaves. And there's no surprise I'm going to be using this later. <laughs> this is a, like a linen effect and pool party. Absolutely beautiful. Um, then we've got Calypso Coral Roses, complete background, and then a pebbled path um, textured, fabric textured background. And like I say, I'm talking about texture. There isn't actually texture on the paper, but it looks like it, there is. And then you've got these. Now, these to me look a bit like dahlias. Are any of my gardeners in the house, are they these dahlias or chrysanthemums? I don't know. Dahlias, the <laughs> the nanny that um, mum was talking about, Nanny Baker, my mum, my dad's mum, used to have dahlias, and I remember coming home from her house once, and there were dahlias on the back seat, and earwigs crawled out, and I was completely freaked out. So freaked out now that I. I, I don't like dahlias at all because I'm convinced that a little wiggly thing is going to come and wiggle in my ear. Ugh. And, <laughs> and then um, you've got like a painted colour wash background as well. Oh, Zaina, I'm so sorry. Um. Zena's had a poorly toe and she's had to have it removed, but then it's got shingles. Oh, dear. And saying she thinks they're dahlias. Ugh. Um, and Val's here. Val, hello. Nice to, nice to have you with us today. Okay, so that's the papers. Let me show you the stamps and the dies no nope. not those stamps these stamps um so there are three image stamps and then four birthday uh, four sentiments so there's happy mother's day best birthday wishes, congratulations, and sending thanks. So quite a nice mixture of, of sentiments. Um, the dies, they are a set of eight. So you've got three that cut out the stamped images. So three that cut out those. And then the other five I will show you. So you've got three lots of leaves and two lots of flowers. So let me just get those out. <coughs> so, so these are the uh, stamped and die cut images. So obviously, that's your your big image and your smaller image and then your leaves. Now, the cool thing with the leaves is it's it's a really long piece, but you can easily snip that off and have it as two pieces. But equally, it's a corner. See what? Um, uh, 
there you go that's better you can see it like that so you, it's it's a corner so you can make it as a as a nice corner piece put them in in two corners or join them up make a wreath type thing very cool so they're the die cut pieces that go with the stamps and then you have three different leaves so this one is more like a rose leaf but it's got all the little dots on it and then you've got these two as well and they've 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 got come on let's see if it will focus on my hand hmm maybe um it's got little tiny dots and tiny cut out pieces so it's just the texture on them is is really cool and i'm actually going to be using some of those on a card in a little bit and then you've got those flowers that are like star shaped flowers and then these ones which are kind of like tulip style flowers and they have got like a little die cut piece there so you can actually kind of bend them and and shape them a little bit as well so there you go so a really nice set of dies and I'm often thinking about, you know, how else can I use them? I mean, firstly, all the three images from the stamp set, I've got a die to cut. So that's really cool. But then to have these, these flowers are going to be really useful, but so are the leaves. And I think um, having a variety of leaves that you can die cut is, is really good. Um, because they can just add a little bit of texture to things. So, um, I'm going to start out making, making a card. I'm going to do a bit of colouring. Because this stamp set absolutely is a colouring in stamp set. However, 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 um, you could just stamp it tone on tone in in one colour. You've all you've just got lots of different options with this. If you don't like colouring in, and I know some people don't. I'm going to show you with the blends how quick you can actually colour in. Now, there are some colouring in experts out there that will show you how to perfectly shade and how to, to colour in. And it will take you about half an hour to colour in this image. I'm going to do it in about a minute, <laughs> maybe two. So. Um, if you're if you've never done any coloring with blends uh, particularly then i'm just going to show you how quickly and easily you can do this so i don't want you to be concerned or worried that you have to be an expert colorer i am not an expert colorer by any stretch of the imagination um and uh, yeah i'm i'm really pleased with the with the results I get, and I'm sure that you will be too. So, first things first, I'm using blends. So, I'm using Memento Black Ink. Okay. Do not use Stays On when you're using blends. Basically, these are alcohol based markers. Stays On is a solvent based marker, and it will bleed, and you'll get a horrible mess. So you need to use Memento with the blends. The other thing with the blends is they come in a set of two. 
So you get a light and a dark in each color. When they run out, you replace them. Sadly, we don't have refillable ones yet. I keep sending messages to Stampin' Up! and requesting them, um, but not so far. Um, blends, like all our markers, need to be stored flat. Do not, actually, that's a light and a dark. That looks better. Um, don't store them on their end because all of our markers have a central reservoir for the ink. So if you stand them up like that, the top ends will dry and the bottom ends will be flooded in ink. So hold them flat or store them flat. Okay, so I have done a bit of prep first. So I've got some dots. I've got an old olive layer. I have got a embossed layer with a, a happy birthday. So this happy birthday isn't from Stippled Roses. I just wanted a plain happy birthday. So I actually used this one from Timeless Class, Timeless Charms. And it says, happy birthday, my dear. But I cut the my dear off because I would never say I would never send that. <laughs> so I just use the happy birthday bit of it. And be aware that you can do that. These are your stamps. If you want to do stamp surgery on them, you fill your boots. Chop them up. So I stamped it and then I embossed it. And I embossed it with this embossing folder, which is probably my most used one. It's out of the 3D Basics and it's the kind of linen effect. So basically, I stamped my happy birthday and then I ran it through the machine. Um, you can't, you don't do it the other way around because if you try and stamp over this texture, it will, the stamp impression won't be clear. So I've done that in advance and I've also stamped and die cut to make it easier. And Tracy makes a really good point. You can also use your blends with our normal ink pads. So you can stamp with a normal ink pad and use the blends as well because our normal ink pads are water-based. You just mustn't use anything that is solvent-based. Okay, and I've got some daffodil. Now, I, <laughs> I don't know whether my bangles are actually annoying with their sound. Let me know. I'll tuck them up. <laughs> I'll tuck them up on my arm and see. You need to let me know. Okay, so a couple of things to know when you're coloring in with your blends is you need to rest on something. Do not use blends on your best oak dining room table because you'll see, I'll show you in a minute, they'll come through um, and they'll come through to the back. So it will leave marks on, on here. So what I've actually got is... A light and a dark old olive. Ah, hang on. A light and a dark daffodil and a light and a dark lemon lolly. I'll put those away. Um, so the way that I colour in, um, when I've got quite a large image, is I lay down a layer of colour first. And then I go in and do my shading and additional um, coloring. So I'm going to start, I'm going to do the flowers first. When Before you start coloring, always have a, have a good look at the image because you've got your two main roses here, but you've got two buds here. You've got another rose here and then two buds here. So you need to figure... 
sorry, um, you need to figure out which bits are going to be yellow and which bits are going to be green. So I'm going to do that and I'm actually going to use the brush tip and the lightest colour and I am just going to colour in. And remember what I said a minute ago about the fact that um, some people will spend a long time doing this. I'm not. So that bit's going to be yellow. That bit in there is. This is all going to be yellow. And at this point, I'm not worrying too much about the detail. I'm just making sure that I've got some colour down where it needs to be. Okay, so let me just bring that up so you can see. Now, the joy of the way stamping up um, do the stamps is basically the shading is, is pretty much done for you. So you'll see in a second when I put this layer of green down as well, this is old olive and it's the light one, um, that actually in many ways you don't need to um, do any more shading if you don't want to. Now, I have to say, because this is me <laughs> doing colouring here, I'm using the brush tip. For those of you, and I know I have lots of demonstrator friends who, who watch, um, so hello and a big shout out to you if you're a demonstrator. Um, when I'm teaching in class, I always recommend that they use the bullet tip, not the brush tip. Um, basically, because I'm really gentle with my brush tips, but a lot of people aren't. So if you are a demonstrator and you're going to kind of do this kind of colouring technique with your customers, I would suggest that they use the bullet tip. OK, so there you go. So there is the basics of that being coloured in. So I'm now just going to go go round with the bullet tip in the darker colour. So and I'm just going to go over some of the areas that Stampin' Up or the designer of this particular stamp has made darker. So I'm not doing a huge amount, just a few bits here and there. Ooh. And already you'll be able to see there's more, more depth and more definition. So I'm then going back in with the lighter marker. So this is Old Olive Still. And I'm just going back over those areas where that darker marker is. And what I'm doing is just softening it and blending it. Because I'm using the bullet tip as well, it means that I can just get in and make sure that every area that I want to be old olive is old olive. Now, because this isn't a huge image, I'm doing all of the green bits all at once. Um, but when I come back in with the um, darker daffodil, I'll do one flower at a time. So there you go. So look, all the green is all done. Move that out of the way. So now I'm using the dark daffodil. And again, I'm just going over those areas that are the darker lines or the, the, 
the the more dotty areas i suppose is kind of the way to describe it so you can see there and again it's already giving it some definition but now i'm just going to go back over with the light and just soften it out and that's why i love blends so much because you don't end up with that really harsh line with other types of markers There we go. So that's softened out all of that colour. So make sure each time you're putting your lids back on. Um, so let's just add a bit of extra colour here. And again, I'm using the bullet tip. And then going back in with the bullet tip. And I'm just making sure there's no white areas. I don't know if anyone's timing me. It's probably going to be five minutes. <laughs> it's because I'm wittering on. And then last little bit on these two, well, three actually. There we go. All done. So you've you've got an image that looks like it's got a huge amount of definition and depth to it, but obviously it's completely flat. And that's that's the skill of the artist that drew this in the first place, but also the awesomeness of the blends. So we're just going to put that card together now. Take care, Anne. She's got to go. And I said I would show you the back. I think you can clearly see that that's the back. So if you had rested that on your table, it would have been a real mess. Now, I don't think there is a right way or a wrong way for these card, this card. Um, the, or this image, should I say. So I think you can kind of pop it whichever way up you want. And then I'm going to layer it onto an old olive layer and then onto a daffodil layer and then I've got some dots here now these dots are I'm going to show you this in a minute these dots are the 2023-2025 in colour dots um, so this is actually wild wheat um, but I think you'll you'll see, although it's officially wild wheat, it works really well with this sort of daffodil variant. And I I love these because 
And you see they come in sets of three. So you've got three different sizes. And when I'm putting them on a card, three little dots is perfect. Um, and it just gives a beautiful, beautiful image. So there we go. So there's a one card and that's a bit of colouring. Um, actually, sorry, I was going to talk to you about this. I will talk to you about that next week. <laughs> Nothing like deciding to do different things on the fly. I'm going to do another card. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, Ali, thank you. Um, I'm going to do another card instead. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. And we'll talk about storage next week. That's what we'll do. So here we go. I've got these are iridescent pearls. I'm using these a lot as well. So in here, da, 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 lots of stuff. So I have got a pool party card blank, a white layer, that pool party linen. <gasps> Look how gorgeous, how gorgeous is that? Um, and then this one's for the inside. And what I'm going to do is stamp that same happy birthday onto a strip. Um, we'll pop it there-ish. So what I thought I'd do is I've die cut these pieces and I thought I would layer two underneath and one over the top. But I've got to figure out where, <laughs> where to put the happy birthday so that they can go in the right place. Okay. So, <clears throat> so I'm just going to put a few dots of Tombow down. <coughs> Excuse me. Hang on. Let me have a slurp of my tea. And then I'm going to do the same. Now, I don't put glue on every single leaf because I want some of them to kind of move. So there's there's a bit of, of movement and texture in there. There we go. Whoa! Apart from when it sticks to my fingers. Let's try that again, shall we? So then this is going to go here. I'm going to pop some dimensionals down. Now, um, I've purposely cut this too long because try as I might, If I try and cut it exactly the same length, I can guarantee it will be a little bit too short, which means I can't use it, or a little bit too long, which is a pain, because then I have to trim it. So I decided I'd just cut it too long, and then I'd just trim it. So if I always do that, then that works really well. So now... I'm going to put this leaf on the top. So again, all the time I'm trying 
to get some dimension. Okay, so I've got my leaves. Now I'm going to pop my flowers down. I'm going to use the mini dimensionals. And, oh, actually, let's put that. Ooh, put that one there. And... Another one. And I think I'm going to put two more. One at the sort of top up here. And one at the further down. Like so. Um, get some of these lovely iridescent pearls. And they fit perfectly in the center of these die cut flowers. So apart from the sentiment, this is all die cut. You know, obviously I've stamped and so many of my cards are stamped images. But, you know, it's also good to have a card that is basically purely die cuts. I'm just going to move that one a little bit. There we go. Okay, so let's get this layered up and finish off. Oh, it's a minute to three. How's that for a super fast card? Obviously, it took a minute or two to do the die cuts. But to be fair, not actually that long. Maybe pop that on the inside as well. There we go. Okay, let me bring that up so you can see. You can see all the texture. It's such a pretty card. And the these little dots in the die cuts this is really frustrating because i can see them really clearly you may have to wait until it's on my blog to be able to see it better um but the way the dots are is just really really cool so there you go so lots of love for this bundle um I love roses. Roses are hands down my favourite favourite flowers. Yellow roses are hands down my favourite variant of any kind of rose. <laughs> um, so the, the, it was a no brainer. There, there was no way that I wasn't going to be purchasing this bundle. But the versatility of the bundle is wonderful. Um, you know, you you can do your colouring in and you can do your, your stamped images and you've got some great sentiment, but you can use the die cuts um, and, and mix and match. And if you buy it in celebration and you get the papers as well, you've got these beautiful papers and images as well. So that's really cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your day to, to hang out with me. I really appreciate it. I will be back here next Tuesday at two o'clock um, with some more goodies to, to show you. All of the products that you've seen today, you can find on my website, www.inspiringinkin.com. 
There'll be clickable links so you can purchase all of the items. Or if you scroll down, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, you'll be able to see those links as well. So thank you so much. I will see you all again next week. So until then, take care of yourselves. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.